Hey, welcome back pros. I'm Adrian Boisel, and today I wanna to talk to you about something that's important that can be a casualty event for your graphic design or web design business. This is something that you really need to be paying attention to, something you need to know, and it's not something you really will know from business school or graphic design school until you actually go through this firsthand. Now, my career spans over 15 years that I've been doing this for a living and working for myself, and I've learned a lot of important lessons along the way. But one of the most important lessons that can be a casualty event is either getting sued or having clients come after you or having bad projects just come on and fall on your lap that can cause your business a lot of stress and then ultimately end your business. And so this is something I want to talk to you guys about today. Three tips I'm going to give you guys to avoid these big business mistakes that can cost you your business and your livelihood. So a little bit of a backstory, in 2017, I was working on an app project for some friends of mine, they were friends at the time, and these guys had this big vision, this grandiose idea to create an app in the fitness industry. And as part of this app, they were gonna create a bunch of content, they were gonna release this app out to their massive audience that they supposedly had, and they were gonna blow this thing up and they were gonna make millions and millions of dollars, they said. But they just needed somebody to build the app. And of course, me being the guy that I am and love doing creative work and doing app design and stuff like that, I agreed to take on the project. I took them through the process, I helped them develop the branding and the strategy and everything for this app, and we ultimately came up with a really great concept and a really great idea. But there are two sides to every coin. As much as there needs to be an app and a great overall design and look and feel, there needs to be content for this app. And so there was a number of problems and the challenges that I experienced through this project and process that I've now learned from, and I wanna share this with you guys. Mistake number one is having a proper contract. Now, I created a contract that I thought was phenomenal at the time. I think I even had an attorney review this at the time, and I created this contract. I had a terms and conditions that every client signed. I had a contract that every client signed, and it was very clearly stated on my invoices of what my expectations were and who was responsible for the payments and all those types of things. Something that you need to make sure that is in every single contract, aside from the scope of work. Now, scope of work is really important. What are you responsible for delivering on? This is the key, but also there's a flip side to that coin. What is your client responsible for delivering on? And this is a mistake that I made. I did not itemize and create a specific list for what the client was responsible for delivering to me. Payments, what's the payment schedule? Content, what was the content schedule? When were they gonna get it to me? How much time did they have to do it? And I based my timeline of how long it was gonna to take to develop the app solely on my side and didn't account for delays on my client side. Now, if you're like me and you've been doing this for any extended period of time, we know that one of the biggest issues that we run into as creatives is waiting for content from the clients. And a lot of clients have this expectation that the cut that we are responsible as a creative agency to supply the content. Well, the truth is, whether you're a gym owner, a plumber, a contractor, it doesn't matter, a lawyer, whatever you are, you are the expert in your field, right? They are the experts in their field. Just like you are the expert at building an app or designing a logo, they are the experts in their area. And they are the ones that are responsible for coming up with that content. If they are not going to provide that content, you need to find this out up front and find out what that expectation is so that you can get that from them or you can go have somebody else do it for you and you can hire an expert that knows this topic. And so this is an area that I left out in my contract and I did not hold these guys responsible for the content that they told me that they were gonna get me. They told me, we're gonna get you all this content. It's all gonna be handled. It never happened. That was their responsibility, but it was my fault because I did not put that in the contract. So that's lesson number one. Make sure you cover the scope of work that you were responsible for, as well as what the client is responsible for. And the second mistake the graphic designers make, that's a big one for your business, is their client communication. I'm the kind of person that hates emails. That's just me, that may not be you. Some of you guys that are like me probably understand. It's a tedious process, it's a low form of communication because there's a lot of context. Communication is your body language, it's the tone of voice, right? I can't get across what I'm trying to say the same way on an email as I am in person. So I like to pick up the phone and call people. And I had many, many conversations with these clients about what my expectations were, what I needed from them. And unfortunately, I didn't wrap up those phone calls with an email follow-up. And because I didn't do that, 
I had very little to show for myself in terms of backing up all of the times that I called over and over and over again, asking for this content, asking for these videos, and ultimately the project was delayed because of that. There was a lot of delays initially because of payments. And for the about first year it took for them to get all the money together for the payments, I did not document that at all of, hey, these payment delays, they were my friends, I trusted them. The last thing I ever expected was to have a legal battle with these guys because I thought that we were friends and I thought that we were gonna be taking care of each other and looking out for each other, but that's just not the case when it comes to dealing with money. So this is something that's really important. Every single time you have some sort of issue along the project, you need to document that. Yes, you can pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, it's been two weeks, I haven't gotten your content, where are we at with that? And they go, oh yeah, yeah, we're working on it, we'll get it to you in a week. Perfect, hang up the phone, write out an email, based on our conversation today on 122.17 or 122.18, you have not gotten me this content, you said you'll get it to me by this date, I need this, 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 and this, based on the scope of work that we talked about, please confirm via email that you got this and then getting a confirmation from them. This is super, super important for you. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a hard time later on backing up that you made those phone calls. Just showing you made a phone call doesn't show any proof. So you need to back these up with emails and having good documentation. Again, with payment delays, it's the same thing. If you have a payment delay, you need to document that, hey, we're on delay now because of the payments or the lack of payments. This is a super important lesson that you need to learn, something that I've learned to a whole new degree now, and I've done this in the past, and I've learned from this from the past, but this one came to bite me recently, and it's something that I don't want you to make the same mistake on. The last mistake the graphic designers make, and here's another really big one, and this is why I'm doing three, because I don't want to overwhelm you. There's a lot here to really think about, is allowing these clients to delay the project and to create problems and to create delays like late payments, like not getting you content, like not communicating. Even when they don't answer, just because you call them and they don't answer, that doesn't mean that it ends there, right? We talked about documenting just a minute ago. You need to send an email and say, hey, I just tried to reach you on blah, 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 blah. Please give me a call back. I need to talk to you about X. Allowing these things to keep happening over and over again, me allowing these guys to have a year to make their payment was a problem. They ultimately ended up trying to say later on down the road when it came to a legal battle that they just offered me company ownership in return for the money that they owed me, which was a flat out lie. They offered me company ownership from the very beginning and then they tried to use that against me in court and this is something that I don't want to happen to you. These are red flags. These are yellow flags, these are red flags. Some of these things like delays in payment, not following through, not communicating, ghosting you, all these things, you need to really take a hard look at these things and see if your boundaries and expectations are going to allow that. For me, going forward with all of my clients, I will not allow this type of behavior and neither should you. It is important that you set these boundaries up front of what your expectations are. As a company now, we have client communication standards that we make our clients sign. We expect our clients to communicate with us just like we expect they expect us to communicate with them. Delays, payment delays, all these things are gonna get documented, they're gonna get put in writing, and they're gonna go into their CRM and into their customer file so that I can use these later on if there's ever any kind of serious issue like a legal battle where you can get sued. Now these are important lessons that I want you to take into consideration. Don't just be Mr. Nice Guy like I am. Take this stuff seriously, this is business, it's not just friendship. I've allowed a lot of my business relationships to become more about friendships, and this has really hurt me at the end. So these are three big lessons I wanted you to know. Make sure you get your good documentation, make sure you just keep track of everything, you have a good contract, and make sure that you don't allow people to run you over. This is really important. So that's what I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below. It really helps us with YouTube, showing this type of content that can really help people to more people like yourself. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and as always, keep looking up.